Hi, my name is Clint, and I'm going to demonstrate how to install the dropout spice rack. First of all, the tools you need, number, number two Phillips, you need a number one and a number two square drive, a 3 8 inch socket, a 3 16 hex head, it needs to be on an extension at least nine inches long, plus or minus, uh, longer is better. A center uh, drill, pilot drill, you need a tape measure and a pencil. Now the unit needs to be at least 3 eighths of an inch off the bottom. If you're using a finished bottom, then add the thickness of the finished bottom you want to put on it to raise it up that distance. In this case, I'm going to use a half inch finished bottom, so I'm going to put it at 7 eighths of an inch off the bottom. So I'll mark the 7 eighths inch first. Then it's going to be a half an inch back all the way parallel. So you need to mark a half inch, both top and bottom. Now to help with uh, putting the unit up to begin with, I like to drill the first hole, which I'm going to use this one here, which is three quarters of an inch in, eight and a half inches off the bottom. So I'm going to add the seven eighths. So that's going to make it nine and three eighths off the bottom and add the half inch, make it an inch and a quarter back. I'll mark the nine and three eighths. I like to use a tri-square. One and a quarter. Then using a center pilot drill, Start that first hole. Now the uh, number two square drive for the plate mounting screws. Take the unit, which is heavy, hold it firmly in place. Hole. Don't tighten it up yet until you get the second hole started. Now holding this right at your half inch back set. Now the second screw. Now just make sure everything is where you wanted it to be. Now we'll proceed to install eight more of the plate mount screws that are all visible at this time.
Now there's still two more screws that you can't get to right now. This one right behind here, and this one that's behind the gas spring. So at this point, the unit is under high tension because that's how it aligns the uh, gas spring to be fully extended. So we have to, before we can adjust anything, we have to bring it down and lock it in place. So carefully being sure you have a good solid grip so that it doesn't get away from you and pinch you. Bring it down, hold it, take this, the uh, thumb screw on the back and drive it in, run it in all the way in the guide, behind the guide bar or in the guide bar. Now that'll hold the unit from coming up and it's in place. Now we can go ahead and get this screw. Oops. Right here. Tighten up these ones that we started to begin with. Make sure all of them are tight. Now there's still the one more here. We need to adjust this gas spring now back to its lightest position. So using your 3 16 hex in reverse, run the carrier all the way back. Don't need to jam it, so this is going to get it to work all the way back. Okay. Now then the unit is at its lighter setting. And we still have that one screw right behind there. So at this point, we have to just open this slightly so that we can put the last screw in. Now pull it back down, or actually at this point, now you can let it back up, and we'll get prepared to the rack for installing it. Okay, now that we have the fixed plate mounted in place, we're ready to install the rack. First of all, there's the stop bar with our plastic components that is the, the stop block, and that's going to go in this bottom open corner. Using your pilot drill again. Drill that hole, and then the number two square drive. You'll notice that there's two holes on the back here. This open small hole goes over this small stud, and then the screw will go in the lower hole. Holding it firmly in place, drive the screw in nice and tight. Okay. Now, this is the rack. It has a uh, top and bottom. The front it has the it holes for the, the uh, door mount blocks. The bottom will have a wood block on it for uh, you to mount your finished bottom or to leave it finished on its own. Before you install it, be sure that the plastic washers are in place. Those come with it in shipping and they should still be there. Mount the unit up onto those four studs. Using the nylock nuts and your 3 8 socket, first start the, the nylocks. Bring the unit back down and set the thumb screw. This 
will make it easy for installing the rest of the parts. The rest of the plastic blocks, there's two of them that are the same. They go on the top reversing each other. The long, the long end goes to the back, making up the space for the mechanism. And the bottom one, same way, the slot in it fits onto the slot down below. the number two Phillips and using the 3 8 stainless steel screws using the top screws yes. Okay, now we're ready for the door mount blocks. These have a front and back with the slot. You want that to be on the inside so for adjusting. And with the three holes, you'll have the set screw is going to be either at the bottom or the top so you can reach it with the Allen wrench. These are using quarter inch long stainless steel screws. Your rack is complete. Now we're ready to install the next cabinet in line. Now in this particular case I have already added on an extension to the next cabinet to take up the void so I continue the face frame style. That's up to you whether you want to do that or not but you need to set the next cabinet four inches away from, from the last cabinet.
Okay, now your cabinet is set, and you'll notice that the unit can move through the uh, space, and your guide bars are doing their job to keep it aligned. Now, at this point, you have no support right on this corner right here, so that's the reason for the slip plate. So this slip plate here with the two-sided tape on the back, you're going to want to take and put that in from the bottom here, pull the tape off, and stick it down. Let's do that first. Okay, now we're ready to finish the rack. This is the slip guide that's going to go in the bottom of the, of the rack to guide the front edge. So first of all, we'll take the two-sided tape protecting strips off. Slip it into place. Keep it all the way to the front edge. That way your trays will slip right in behind it, and that will stay there. Just press it down on those screws. Okay, now we release the thumb screw. And carefully allow the unit to move back up into the slot. Now we're going to put our cross block across the bottom to hold it to where it stops at its finished position. What we need to do first is uh, I'm going to have a half inch bottom, so I made a, a piece of scrap material from the same half inch material that I'm going to be using, and I'm going to put that on here. So first of all, I'll just get the screw started. Now when that comes up, that'll stop right where we want the bottom to hit across the finished unit. That sets us up with where our screw holes are going to be for the door. So we're going to take a little block. I made this block up here where I took and put a couple of, uh, of the door bumpers on it so that it'll have the same distance out that the door itself will be. And we're going to put that right on across these. And as you see, they are a little bit higher than where they want to be. So we're going to adjust them in until they fit right over the block. Okay. It's going to be where the door mount is going to be. And we'll do that top and bottom. adjusted with a coin. Okay, now, it's a very important measurement at this point. This is where everything is at its position of where it wants to sit. So now we're going to measure the height to the, uh, to the hole. In this case here, we're right at 4 inches. Second one, 34 and a half. Four, 34 and a half. Then measure from your frame to center, and then you're going to add to that whatever your overlap is, generally half inch. Uh, in this case, we're using a, uh, a five inch door, so it's a half inch overlap. 
Okay, so we're going to measure this at 15 sixteenths. Add a half inch to that. So that's going to be 1 and, nine, and 7 sixteenths. And then the top one is 1 and 1 sixteenths. So that's going to be 1 and 9 sixteenths. Now we're going to transfer that information to the back of our door. In this unit, I have added a lip piece on the bottom here, which is going to fit with my face frame. Okay, now we're ready to mount the door. We've drilled the pilot holes on the back, located in the appropriate locations, ready to transfer. So we're going to drop this down one more time, but before we do with this bottom here, let's tighten these thumb screw, I mean these uh, set screws. They don't have to be real tight, just a little drag to hold that from moving. We'll set the set screw, one, or the thumb screw one more time. And set screws on there. Okay. Then we'll take our door mount screws. hard to get at that one. I like to use my little right angle adapter when I can. And that solves that. Now we're ready to take the uh, stop block off the bottom. Whoop. Got the set screw. Now it will stand on its own. We'll take off our stop block from the bottom now. And now the unit is moving freely on its own. Since I'm going to be putting the finished bottom on, I'm going to just put it on with a pin nailer here. Normally I'd recommend some glue. We'll just pop it in place just to show you how to put it on. Be sure you have an eighth of an inch extra gap on the sides, just like you would any door. Now the unit can come back down. It's essentially complete. We can just all the trays installed. We're done. Now we can just mount the door next to it.